<laughs> Fan Showdown, Season 2, Episode 5. We're back and we're ready to check out more of you guys' crazy fan designs on our never-ending journey to discover, you know, new ways to take a, a normal A12X25 and convert it into a work of art. Also, I did notice a few questions on some of the last videos uh, of you guys asking how to go about submitting fans to the Fan Showdown. So let me know if you think it'd be useful if I kind of... If I kind of created like a short little video on the submittal process, where to find the information, where to send your designs to, and whatnot. If you think that'll be useful, let me know uh, in the comments and then maybe I'll make it. Also, I do have a Twitch channel. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description, but it's kind of a good place if you have questions to kind of pop in, hang out, ask your questions, just chat it up, or just kind of just kind of watch me get murdered by creepers. Okay, we should really work on uh, a house. Why are these spears? Oh my God, where did they? This week, Logan will kick us off with the Vaughn. What's Vaughn, you ask? Well, Vaughn is an acronym that stands for Very Original Name. Nice. Logan said this was his first ever go at designing a fan and that the inspiration behind this fan was just a normal eight-bladed PC fan. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Now, one thing I do find interesting about the Vaughn fan is just how straightforward the blade design is. So there's no crazy airfoil design, there's no complicated twisties or curves. The blades are just simple C-scoops on a 45 degree angle, and this simple blade design is kind of what makes this one so original. Normally we see all those crazy intricate blades, and this time he's just like, ah, uh, yeah, like that. Like this. Done. Now things do get a little dicey on this next one, and I mean, I mean, I like the fan, don't get me wrong, but uh, I don't think Nintendo's legal team would be a fan. This is the tri- Uh, yeah, so this is the Triforce. It was designed by Hunter, and I'm guessing you may know what the inspiration is behind this fan because Hunter, well, he nailed it. So Hunter said he was new to 3D printing and the whole 3D modeling thing, but ever since watching one of the fan showdown videos, he's had this design kind of bouncing around in his mind, and he decided, you know, why not go about making it a reality? Ha! Ah, mission accomplished. I'm sure you'll be getting a nice letter, a nice cease and desist letter from uh, the Nintendo legal team. It's probably in the mail now. But uh, I kind of, I like fans like this. I like when people take logos or nice little designs that we're all familiar with and then they turn them into like functional 3D objects. I think it's really cool. If you're a Zelda fan, this is your fan. Speaking of functional, this is the Bellmouth Madness. Created by Curtis and the idea behind this design was to take, um, take the hub, which is normally like unused space and make it more functional when it comes to cooling. Curtis did this by first designing a normal six-bladed fan, then extending the blades uh, at the center leading edge upwards and then towards the center to effectively utilize the full fan disc as um, blade space. These are always like some of the best ones to test, like the whole, I wonder if we did, did that and we just try it out. That's kind of what this whole fan showdown is all about. So nice job, Curtis. I like what you're going for here. Uh, and when it comes to outside the box thinking, James. James knows what he's doing, and I'm not talking about me. Talk about the other James. This is the extractor. And at first glance, you're gonna think, well, that's probably inspired by like a turbo, but you'd be wrong. The real inspiration behind this design is the Rally turbo fan wheels. What? Yes, this fan is inspired by a fancy hubcap. Now these hubcaps, or wheel covers, do have a practical use. The fins exert a centrifugal force on the hot air around the brake disc, and as the wheel spins, that force gets higher and higher, pulling that hot air away from the brakes and effectively cooling them down. So that's essentially what James aims to do here. He won't be blowing air through the air cooler. He's gonna be pulling the hot air away from the air cooler. As for the design, James did a great job. The print was simple, easy, it came out super clean, and also the nice little major hardware text. Nice little touch. But what I like the most about this fan design is the fitment. When you put this in the housing, it looks just like the wheel covers and the clearances between the blades and like the fan frame is incredible. He either, he either tested this out at home or he's just, he's just that good. Just imagine this like out of black PLA or a black uh, filament in like a black frame on a black radio, like super murdered out. It would look so, it looked really sweet actually. And then if you like were able to put like a a red glow behind it, like a hot brake disc. That would actually be that would actually be pretty sick. But anyway, I digress. I mean, as long as it moves air.
Did you catch that? I see what you guys were saying last time about like the fan and the table and like the interference on the airflow. So I took you guys advice. I used this uh, fancy little glass thing that literally does nothing but just stand there. And I used that to prop the fan up so we didn't have any ear interference from the table. Good catch. I liked it. Also, the extractor had no trouble moving the air. It performed just as intended. So that was that's pretty sweet. This thing, I'm telling you, you might see it in a PC build in the future. But how'd they do for sound? Vaughn came in at 43.9 dBA. Bellmouth Madness came in a little louder at 46.3. The extractor was actually surprisingly loud considering how quiet I thought it was gonna be at 50.9. And the Triforce was the loudest of the bunch at 52.5. Cooling wise though, things were actually pretty close. This time around, things didn't really turn out how I expected, to tell you the truth. The Triforce finished with an average temperature of 80.6 at a room temperature of 20.4, giving it a delta of 60.2. The Belmont Madness finished with an average temperature of 79 at a room temperature of 20.6, giving it a delta of 58.4. Vaughn finished with an average temperature of 79 at a room temperature of 20.7, giving it a delta of 58.3. And the extractor finished at an average temperature of 78.8 at a room temperature of 20.6, giving it a delta of 58.2. So everything was really close. The extractor did the best, barely. But I was not expecting the Triforce to do so badly. I mean, it just looks like kind of like a normal fan. This was really surprising. It was loud and it didn't really cool very well. So... I blame Nintendo. <laughs> but thanks guys for watching. If you want to get in on the action, uh, check out my Thingiverse account and send me at least an STL file to thefanshowdown at gmail.com. Also, you can come join, join me on Twitch. You can watch me explode from creepers and just play whatever random game we are playing at the time. Ask me questions, just come hang out. It's always, it's always fun. Till next time.